Hello friends, welcome to another episode of the EM webinar series on the topic GI emergencies. My name is Dr. Krishna Prasad and I currently work as a senior clinical fellow at Luton and Unstable Hospital in the UK. The question for discussion today is, is rather a very simple one. Does all patients presenting with upper GI bleed require an NG tube insertion or lavage? Now this particular question is, is very important because in the past maybe five or seven years a lot of research has come up uh, arguing you know whether we need this or not and uh, slowly the practice and the evidence is changing. Now let's look at some of the presumed benefits of this procedure. Well it, the first one, it helps to confirm the source of bleeding whether it's upper GI or not. And sometimes it also helps us to get a clear picture of the stomach. And also it can help us to reduce the risk of aspiration. But are these claims really backed up by evidence? Now that's what we are here to find out. So let's check out. I'd like to put forward this particular study. Now this is from the United States. It's, it's an article published in the Gastrointestinal Endoscopic Journal in 2011. Now you can see a little bit of, you know, Indian names in that, but most of them are working in the USA. Now this particular study was, well, they wanted to find out whether just putting in, you know, using NG lavage was associated with having any improved outcomes in terms of patient benefit, as well as procedure wise. Now it was, I mean, they took a collection of 632 patients. It was a retrospective analysis. And the design is a particular one. It's something called a propensity matched retrospective analysis. Now that means that the baseline characteristics were different. So what they tried to do is that they tried to you know match them up so that there will be some sort of uniformity among these. Well, the outcome parameters, what they looked at, so the first group had NG lavage done, the second group did not have, and they looked at 30-day mortality rate, length of hospital stay, transfusion requirements, surgery, and time to endoscopy. Now, the only benefit what they found out was performing a nasogastric lavage was associated with the earlier performance of endoscopy. But at the end of the day, it did not affect, I mean, it did not give the patient any benefit. It did not affect the clinical outcomes. So as I said earlier, those who found that there was blood in the aspirate we had an early endoscopy, but those patients at the end of the day did not have any, any particular benefit, even in terms of mortality, hospital stay of need of emergency surgery. Now, the same journal had an editorial which focused on this particular study. And it's very interesting because they carried on four pages on this particular, you know, trying to criticize and have a... Uh, uh, they went through a very detailed critical review on this particular article. It says that the authors are reluctant to accept the clear meaning of their excellent investigation. The finding of a prediction of more and early endoscopy in a study that found no patient level benefit has a meaning that is opposite to the one the authors imply. It means that Nasogastric lavage has a means to decide on more and early endoscopy is of no benefit to the patient. Now, I understand that this particular study just said, you know, at least said something positive. Now, let's move to the next one. Now, if you look at the evidence, having said that there is a positive NG aspirate and the patient getting subjected to a therapy, the chance is very low. For example, what I'm trying to say is that the positive predictive value of getting an NG aspirate and then going forward with the treatment you can't depend entirely on it because the positive predictive value is just 32 to 45 percent. Also, it does not imply any patient benefit. There was a study in the Annals of uh, Emergency Medicine which tried to find out which was the most painful procedure in the ED. And putting a tube through the nose was reported the most painful procedure. Now, if, if this procedure doesn't have any patient benefit, why do you want to unnecessarily put the patient in more discomfort. Now, if you look at so even as a diagnostic test, NG aspiration performs poorly. It, it only has a sensitivity of 42%. Now, this is, uh, is a little more recent one, 2017. 
Now this study is also from the United States, but this is uh, this is I mean this is a trial of course, but it's a very it, it just has a very few patients, just only 140 patients. Now they also asked the same question whether you have a comparing a, a group with NG placement with aspiration lavage and a patient with no nasogastric tube placement, did it improve any patient related outcome? And the answer was no. There was no impact on the outcomes, only that most of the, well, they tried to put the NG tube on successful, complicated, or associated with discomfort. Now, this is not a trial or an analysis, just a literature review. So they tried, they sit down, they've been a group of people sat down together and tried to analyze what are the literature available so far. Now basically, they're also trying to find out um, meanings or answers like me. Well, they had subdivided their questions. Now, first they wanted to know that whether there was any, any, any particular improvement in visualization, you know, by using an NG tubular watch or a localization of bleeding or any patient-related benefit from early endoscopy, or uh, the same question again and again, different patterns. Well, the answer is, no, we don't have a very strong design or a particular RCT to support anything. But based on the available literature, it says that this particular procedure is painful, time-consuming, and there is no patient-related benefit demonstrated. So. They say that rather than putting the patient in more discomfort, use validated scoring systems. Use your clinical judgment to predict which patients are high risk and which patients are low risk. And even if you want to know that whether this patient needs, you know, the you need a clear picture of the stomach, they suggest to use pre-endoscopic erythromycin infusion. And they say it's a good, if not better, alternative for improving visualization of the stomach. Now, the whole concept of erythromycin comes from this, this particular RCT. Now, this is particularly a very good study, okay? It says that if you administer intravenous erythromycin, it provides satisfactory endoscopic conditions without the need of a nasogastric tube and gastric lavage. Now, we'll have to, I know everyone knows that uh, erythromycin is a macrolide antibiotic, but there is also an another mechanism by which it acts it's it's also a prokinetic the mechanism is by which it it it, it stimulates the motilin receptors on the duodenum so th what happens is that it enha enhances the motilin release from enterochromaffin cells in the duodenum and also enhances the contractile effects of gastric antrum and duodenum so if you give this drug half an hour before you perform the endoscopy well you get more than less a, a better visualization rather than just doing a lavage and just cleaning the whole stuff up. So if you're coming to the guidelines, now we don't have any Indian guidelines. I searched the you know the internet all over. There are two guidelines, one from the Europe and from the Ameri American. Well it says that this particular procedure, NG tube or insertion lavage, is not recommended in patients with upper GI bleeding for diagnosis, prognosis, visualizer, or therapeutic of anything. Now this is a very strong recommendation, so I think we can accept this. Well, coming to the final words, for me, what, what I would like my residents and my fellow doctors to see is that let's follow the evidence, okay? The evidence says there's no particular benefit from putting, subjecting a patient to more pain by just putting an NG tube to see if there's blood or not. Let's follow our clinical skills, the clinical criteria, symptoms, vital signs, comorbidities, or the use of a validated GI bleeding risk prognostic scores like Rocal score or the Glasgow Blatchford score. Now these score will help us to, you know, tell us whether this patient's a high risk or low risk. High risk, okay, endoscopy within a set time, maybe twenty four hours. Low risk, okay, you can wait a little more further. And finally, I would say that the practice of NG lavage in the management of patients with acute upper GI bleeding is antiquated. I know there are there might be institutional related protocols available in different hospitals, but these are just a message and a part of academy exercise to enrich your evidence-based knowledge. And yeah, that's it. So uh, that's my final words, and that comes end to this webinar. 
and thank you for listening and if you have any particular feedback just post it to the email uh, written below thank you thank you have a nice day